Thank you very much, Sag uh, Suranya. I am deeply moved by today's event, starting with the dance performance and all uh, the eminent speakers after that. So thank you very much for having me. And Sagarika, you are an inspiration for all of us. I, let me briefly outline what I'm going to talk about. As uh, you know, we, the plan was for Heidi to speak um, after me. So I have a few more details, but there may be some overlap. So please bear with me. I'm gonna start speaking about childhood and culture and then move on to the scientific study of childhood in the field of developmental psychology and its weird nature, as Heidi has already mentioned. Then I will move on to child protection services, after which I'm going to handle a little bit about affluence and international in, and intercultural relationships. What needs to be done will be the concluding part. Let me start by saying that childhood is a universal developmental stage and all societies have beliefs and practices that are valued regarding their care and protection for every society. These beliefs have been accumulated over centuries and families place a high emotional and moral value on culturally familiar ways of rearing children. On account of these investments, People living in a particular cultural historical setting find themselves highly invested in these practices and any departure from these practices are evaluated as different, peculiar, or even morally wrong. All cultures have a very clear idea and ideas about what good childcare entails and have family and community services in place. They may be formal or informal for addressing transgressions. To assume the childcare in non-Western societies is systematically either bizarre, abusive, deviant, or deficient in any way is a human rights violation. Let us see how we arrived here. De developmental psychology is the primary discipline on which global standards of ch children's development and family dynamics are based. However, developmental psychology, as it is applied to gro global child protection agencies, is not universally applicable, as Heidi has already mentioned. It is a culturally specific discipline that is only now beginning to address the relevance of cultural differences. The domination of Western psychological science has resulted in repeated misrepresentations and misunderstandings of how children are cared for. It is now being recognized that what Henrik and colleagues, I use a little bit of research information here, have demonstrated that 96% of the research on which developmental psychology is based comes from these minority countries and is applied to everyone else. And interestingly, 70% of those studies are conducted on university students. How can they be applicable to the rest of the world? Let us now arrive at the child protection services. As Heidi mentioned, they are highly trained in Western developmental psychology and extremely influential in their respective countries. They have legal and political power, as we have heard. Practices were previous, uh, previously practices were shunned, but these are now being criminalized. Societies or groups uh, of people, communities are being pathologized for bringing up their children in ways that they consider valuable and familiar. Thus, a science that is based on a small minority of the world's people cannot be justifiable. Along with my, uh, my colleague, Heidi Keller, we have worked actively towards publishing in academic circles and even uh, public uh, forums about this issue. Let me make a comment now about affluence and politics. In yesterday's article uh, about Norway cares, there was a phrase about India's multiculturalism and cultural tolerance uh, that was mentioned by the Honorable Ambassador. 
I would like to comment about the term tolerance. Let us imagine a couple living happily with each other who mutually tolerate each other. I think that marriage wouldn't last. Would you agree with me? Therefore, let us move from the lukewarm term tolerance to the term mutual respect. It is not that Indians do not consider Western childcare to be odd, peculiar. And some comments we have heard from participants in India, like why do they have children if they don't want to be sleeping next to them? So although these are views of a community, I doubt if you could give me even one example of any Western um, person or family living in India whose child has been taken away on these grounds. Therefore, we must address the issue of politics between countries and the inequality in the way nations are viewed for their cultural practices. We admire the West. Sometimes I believe we admire the West too much. However, as increasing numbers of people are migrating to the West and from the West, we need to have systems in place that are more actively addressing issues of cultural difference. Not only do we treat different nations differently, I also think that poverty communities, even within countries, as was mentioned by the speaker before Heidi, um, poverty communities are treated, are viewed by what they don't have rather than what they have. In a recent encounter of a research group traveling to a poor community in Salvador de Bahia, the students were amazed to see how can poor people, I don't address them as poor, I would rather say people living with poverty. How can they be happy? They should be miserable. I think we forget that people define themselves differently. They have lives, they have well being, they care and love for their children. And it is something we need to understand and respect. The politics of the wealthy needs to change. We need to shift towards approaches of mutual respect and understanding. I read in the article, Norway Cares, that an occasional slap will not automatically lead to action and co-sleeping and hand feeding are not considered instances of, uh, of abuse. Yet, I distinctly recall since I have been um, involved with several cases and I have followed Sagarika's case over the last 10 years. I distinctly recall that these terms were used in the intervention by CPS. Let us therefore move to the conclusion that in fact, child protection services through this example are responsible for the very injustice that they promise to prevent from happening. There is a need for a global movement of child removal to be considered as a last option rather than the first option. We need diplomatic, political, cultural, academic exchanges to ensure that no child is separated from his or her parents without reasonable cause. Thank you very much, Suranya, for having me.